Is it possible for a person who has a chronic stutter to be cured? And if so, what does a cure even look like exactly? And finally, what is the science behind all of this? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place because today we're going to take a look and I'm going to review Norman Doidge's book, The Brain That Changes Itself. Now, this particular book doesn't actually address stuttering per se, but it does address neuroscience, brain, and virtually everything else that has to do with the brain. And that's why it's relevant because stuttering, everything with stuttering has to do with the brain. So we can learn so much and we can extrapolate so much from this book and apply it to our understanding of stuttering. So this book mostly consists of fascinating stories and incredible scientific breakthroughs when it comes to the field of neuroscience over the past century or so, and even longer than that, but especially since like the 60s and the 70s. See, for centuries, scientists had believed that the human brain is more or less fixed when you become an adult. They believed that it was literally hardwired. But when modern brain science came along in the 1960s and 1970s, the revolutionary discovery was made that the brain is not actually hardwired like we previously thought, it's actually much more like plastic. And hence, that is where we get the term neuroplasticity. And that is a key, crucial word for us to understand if we're looking to overcome a stutter. Now, what exactly is neuroplasticity or brain plasticity and how does this relate to stuttering? So the definition of neuroplasticity, as I found online, is this. The ability of the brain to form and reorganize synaptic connections, especially in response to learning or experience or following injury. Now, what does neuroplasticity mean for someone like me, or possibly you as well, who's had to deal with a chronic stutter? Well, if we took the official definition of neuroplasticity that I just read, and we were to apply that and go even higher resolution and really focus in the concept to stuttering, I think the definition would read more like this. Neuroplasticity, the ability of the brain to form and reorganize speech patterns and habits, especially in response to a chronic stuttering problem. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the book for a minute. In chapter three, which is called Redesigning the Brain, Deutsch talks about the competitive nature of plasticity. The competitive nature of plasticity affects us all. There is an endless war of nerves going on inside each of our brains. If we stop exercising our mental skills, we do not just forget them. The brain map space for those skills is turned over to the skills we practice instead. If you ever ask yourself, how often must I practice French or guitar or math to keep on top of it? You are asking a question about competitive plasticity. You are asking how frequently you must practice one activity to make sure its brain map space is not lost to another. Now this idea of competitive plasticity is very much relevant to stuttering and here's why. So there is a part of the brain that controls your speech, right? That is in control of your speech habits, your speech patterns, just the way that you talk. Now like we just talked about, there is competition going on. So if 80% of the time, let's say, just to throw an arbitrary number out there, if 80% of the time you stutter when you go out and speak or you're in a social situation, if that's the case, then that disfluent way of speaking is pretty much taken over your entire map or your entire area of the brain that controls your speech. And so at that point, there's hardly any competition because it just becomes this feedback loop where it just gets worse and worse and it doubles down on itself to the point where you feel like you stutter on every other word. And this is why you have some people who are quite severe stutters versus some that are more mild. These severe stutters have, for whatever reason, become more susceptible to that feedback loop and it's pushed them deeper and deeper and deeper into stuttering and their brains have become more and more wrapped and non-competitive to the point that the entire part of their brain that controls their speech is basically your stuttering habits. Another chapter in this book that is also quite relevant to stuttering is chapter eight, which is called Imagination. This chapter talks about the power of mental practice and Deutsch tells the story of Anatoly Sharansky. Definitely butchered that, but anyway. Anyway, he was a Soviet human rights activist who spent nine years 
in prison, and what really kept him from going insane, what kept his brain afloat, was he would play mental chess. Mental chess meaning he would imagine the board in his head and then literally play the game all in his head while keeping track of all of the positions. This is relevant to people who stutter because of what Doige goes on to say on the very next page. One reason we can change our brains simply by imagining is that from a neuroscientific point of view, imagining an act and doing it are not as different as they sound. When people close their eyes and visualize a simple object, such as the letter A, the primary visual cortex lights up, just as it would if the subjects were actually looking at the letter A. Brain scans show that in action and imagination, many of the same parts of the brain are activated. That is why visualizing can improve performance. So if you take that concept and you apply it to stuttering, you might push it off at first and be like, yeah, that doesn't work. Just imagining yourself not stuttering, like that would do anything. But I want you to ask yourself, when have you ever done that? Can you remember a time when you actually did that, where you actually practiced in your head, you visualized yourself speaking fluently, there's a good chance you probably never remember even doing that. So today is your day, my friend. Today is your day to start making this part of, to, to start making this a habit of whenever you leave the house or before you're about to make a phone call, you just imagine yourself speaking fluently. Now this might not do that much in isolation, as I always say, just one thing might not change everything, but if you do this and then apply the other things that I'm talking about as well and you approach it from a variety of angles those these things will accumulate and your speech will thank you for it all right so now let's go back to the question that I asked at the very beginning of this video which was is it possible for a person who has a chronic stutter is it possible to be cured and my answer to that is, well, it depends on what you mean by cured. The reason I say that is, depending on the definition, I would still technically be a stutterer. But that's not how I like to think about it, because I am 95 to 99% fluent in that range. I don't know the exact number. But even that 1 to 5% where I still struggle with my speech, the majority of that goes unnoticed by the people I talk to because I found ways to circumvent it, to, I've just got all these techniques and tricks and tools that I can always attack it from a variety of angles. So I don't ever get stuck in this mono-focused kind of setting. I always have a way out. Is that cured? I don't know, but I don't really care because what matters is that I'm a fluent speaker and I am a fluent speaker. I no longer identify as a person who stutters. I don't think of myself as a stutterer anymore. And I've built up these new ways of speaking, these new speech patterns, these new speech habits that have overwritten the old habits, which is very much connected to what we just talked about earlier about the competitive nature of plasticity. I made it competitive, and the more that I practiced, the more that I acted out this new way of speaking, this fluent way of speaking, the more of a competitive advantage the new habit had. And that led to 80, 85%, 90% fluency, 95% fluency, and beyond. And all of this was possible because of the incredible gift we have called neuroplasticity. We can rewire our brains, we can overwrite old habits with new habits. This is scientifically proven to be possible. So, my friend, be sure to check out this book, The Brain That Changes Itself. It's a fantastic read, and uh, I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check it out. Beyond that, if you want to go deeper and learn a step-by-step, -step, systematic, daily routine to help you overcome stuttering, then I've got the perfect thing for you, and it is my free Stop Stuttering workshop. This workshop will help you achieve 90% fluency in as little as six weeks. It might take you longer than that, but for many of you, that is way more possible than you think. So be sure to check it out. It's 100% free. It is really going to help you out. It's in-depth. It's to the point. It's strategic. It's a routine. Everything that you need to defeat stuttering and to start building your fluency habits. So be sure to check that out. Link is in the description below. Thank you so much, my friend. I will see you in the next video.